Now, as the number of people receiving MMR vaccinations has dropped for the fourth year, despite the number of cases trebling in 2018, Health Secretary Matt Hancock has said that he wouldn't rule out the option of banning children from school if they were unvaccinated. But is it fair on children to miss out on an education if their parents don't want them to have the vaccine? Well, today we're joined by two mothers, Lottie Daly, who believes her child had a bad reaction to a vaccination, alongside Stephanie Nimmo, who was left completely deaf in her right ear after not being vaccinated against the measles. Welcome to both of you. So the facts are there were 259 measles cases in England in 2017, rising to 966 in 2018. Uptakes of both jabs at the age of five has fallen in England for four years in a row from 88.6% up to 87.2% in 2017 to 18. So those are the figures that they speak for themselves. Lottie, you've got three children and you say that actually this is against a child's human rights. If a parent decides that they're not going to vaccinate their child and the school refuses to educate that child, that's against their human rights. I think that whilst those figures are correct, we're also not looking at the other side of the figures. In, uh, there are studies that show from, from the government um, cases of measles deaths from 2003 until 2016 were only 10. In fact, in 2016, only one person, and that was under the age of one, died of measles. It is against the Nuremberg Code. It is against the UNICEF Human Rights Bill for Children to deny them an education and also to inject them or medicate them without their consent or without their parental consent I don't think that that is an appropriate way to get the vaccine uptake up I think that majority of mums they start vaccinating they only stop when something goes wrong the Sunday Times showed that they did a freedom of information request that showed that actually I think it was something like 49 children died of vaccine reactions and that was the Sunday Times freedom of information request from the government mm. there were 2100 yellow card um, vaccination reactions reported to the government from all the GPs. There was one death of measles in the UK, one. I think we're scaremongering and I think that if we want the uptake to be higher, then we need to help parents get these... We need to listen to mothers whose vac vaccine damages have happened but the, and we need the, the, to the, make them safer. There's, an, exa there's an example sitting on the sofa here um, mm -hmm. that uh, you weren't vaccinated and you're, you are deaf in your... You'll find examples of anywhere. I, People die from Lottie, the flu. Lottie, I think the, the whole point is um, that... We've almost been sanitised that a generation ago that children were dying of measles. Children were in iron lungs with polio. And because of the vaccination programme, we are not exposed to those deaths. We're not seeing them. And we're not also aware of not just the fact that children are dying of measles. That's an old statistic from 2016. We with, got with, vac to date. with vaccination rates actually decreasing, I think we are going to see the numbers of deaths increasing. But there's also the damage not. that these, these illnesses do and cause. So, for example, I was left deaf in my right ear. That's actually, you know, that, that's a, it's a, a difficult thing, but it's not, it's not life-threatening. But there are also children and young people who are um, unable to have the vaccine. They're immune suppressed and, and therefore they are put at risk by unvaccinated no, children not. within... The, they absolutely no, they're not. The MMR I, I had, sheds for up to 30 okay, days. Lottie, so, can I, can I answer it? My youngest daughter, Daisy, was born with a very rare genetic disease and she was unable to be vaccinated. Mm. Um, and so she was therefore at risk of um, contracting measles, mumps, rubella and dying very painfully of those because she had a low weakened immune system. Yeah. I'm contacted daily by friends whose children and, and people that I write about whose children had treatment for cancer, whose immune systems are wiped out yeah. and therefore cannot have a vaccination. So, so Lottie, this isn't about the individual then, if what I'm understanding is right. This is about the community, actually. Mm -hmm. And there'll be people that'll be watching this that say, if you don't vaccinate your child, then you are actually being selfish. No, I think it's yes. selfish to demand that children are, are vaccinated when we do not know the efficacy and the safety long term. There's been, never been a trial that puts unvaccinated and vaccinated and health outcomes has never been there. There was 2,100 deaths from routine vaccinations. There was one from measles. Whilst I have every sympathy in the world for what you went through, you know I do, for, for every parent that loses a child. But there is another mm -hmm. side to this story and there no. are children dying from vaccines. The, the vaccination programme has been that? running two, for two decades. Thing. It has been running and for years and we have prevented... We have prevented these illnesses and now we are seeing a resurgence of illnesses that were being 
We are, Lottie. We are seeing a resurgence of illnesses and preventable diseases that were essentially eradicated that are coming back. So and should it's... children... Should children... And this is the, the, sort of the crux of what we were talking about, that the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, said he wouldn't rule anything out, that maybe uh, if, if children were unvaccinated, that there could be an exclusion from school. Interestingly, and it m might have been a bit of political grandstanding here, because the, the Department of Education said we ask schools to check what immunisations a child has had when they join the school, but our guidance clearly states that schools cannot refuse admission or exclude a pupil because they have not been immunized. I, I think schools should be asking for... If a, if a parent wants to send an unvaccinated child to school, I think the schools are Why? within their rights to ask for a medical certificate that gives evidence as to why that why? child is not vaccinated. But why? Because we are protecting the whole community. For us if to you have herd got an immunity, illness, you cannot pass it if on. If we have herd... If to have herd immunity, 95% of the population needs to be vaccinated. And, uh, and that, that, immunity, that herd schedule, immunity is going days, on. What about those? How can my child, without any disease <clears> whatsoever, <throat> give a disease, yet an MMR-vaccinated child with an attenuated live virus which sheds for 30 days is far more of a danger than my healthy, as far as I know, child. And so when you, are, when you go Don't for your child's vaccinations, children. for example, when, when your child is given the polio vaccination, you are told to take pre precautions when changing their nappy because there is, it's a live vaccine. And the that's MMR? the whole point. The, the MMR is a live vaccine. So you're, there's and that's more why chance of an MMR child passing a, a child who's been vaccinated with I think there's any of the live attenuated <clears throat> vaccines. And there is for a child who hasn't got a disease to pass on. And what about the children that die? Why don't we look after them? If we listen to those mothers' voices and we make vaccines safer, Sorry, die, then the uptake will go off. up. Of vaccines, it showed the Freedom of Information request showed there was 2,100 adverse reactions. Oh, we're have to... Final, final word. I'm sorry, but the, I think with everything, with parenting, we are taking calculated risks. And with everything, nothing is 100% safe. The contraceptive pill isn't 100% safe. But as parents, I think we have a moral responsibility to our children and to the community as a whole to protect that community and those children from easily preventable and life-threatening illnesses. All right, we have to leave it there. <coughs> thank but you thank both you both for coming in. Very much indeed. Thank you.